Everybody, this is Birch, and uh, a few days ago, I put up this video about Moon Knight sales, and then there's a little tip of the nod, a tip of the hat, the nod, whatever you want to say, to America and uh, the Unbeatable Wasp and Iceman, a bunch of titles that people like to do videos about. There's been a lot of conversation about it, and it's an interesting reaction I, I got to that video because a number of people were, well, not a number, small number. I mean, it's it's these are the fringe, I would say. A couple people got very angry, said, you know, oh, you're just like those other channels who are beating up on those uh, those comics. I have to feel like those people may have not watched the video because either they're denying the reality of the actual sales, which they're hard numbers, man. They're not mine. They're the numbers of sales. Or alternatively, um, you know, they, they just don't like any mention at all, which is you know, kind of the problem. And then there's another group who is upset because it's like, hey, you're saying social media activity doesn't matter. So you're saying creators should be able to say whatever they want on social media. I'm like, that that, that wasn't the point of the video. And, and yes, of course, people can say whatever they want. It's not necessarily a good idea. As somebody pointed out in the comments, if you say, uh, if you invite your critics to feast on your ass, that is not a, it's just, that's not, that's not a good idea. That's, that's a bad idea. Even if you re even those critics are super, super terrible. That's still not a, a good idea. I think somewhere about five years ago, I don't know. It feels like, as a society, we normalize this idea that if somebody was irritating us, or if somebody is a bad person, or if somebody is critiquing us the wrong way, or whatever, if somebody is a jerk, then they had opened up the door to you know treating them back even worse. That it, it's, it's like everybody really wants to be a jerk to each other. They want to just insult and flame and scream at one another, but they feel like, hey, you know, it's bad form to do that when somebody's being nice. So if there's any tiny opening, any little excuse to uh, to be able to just go to town on somebody and get really angry, then uh, you know you should take it. So it, it, it feels a little bit like that. At any rate, um, the uh, the point of the video was mainly to show how futile it all is, how how pointless a lot of this stuff is. Uh, I'll, I'll throw this out there, just, just something to contemplate. It is highly likely that the America Chavez comic book has made uh, YouTubers more money than the actual comic book made Marvel. Uh, probably, I, th I think it's, it's highly likely that is the case. Now, a lot of channels aren't monetized and everything else, but it feels like it's, it's, it's at least, if it's not... If it's not beating it, it's really close. And I'd say that not, I'm, I'm not sure who I'm insulting <laughs> by saying that. I guess I'm just saying it, it seems kind of pointless because this thing, this comic that has generated so much attention had so little of an impact anywhere. Now, granted, I, I grant you this, maybe Disney uh, decides to do the America Chavez uh, Disney Plus show and they do a faithful rendition of the Gabby Rivera storyline, and then suddenly the comic has more relevance because, you know, they made this uh, they made this show out of it. Maybe the show is a smash hit, and it makes billions of dollars, and, and maybe maybe lots of those things are happening. Anything is possible. Um, but, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I'm willing to bet no. I'm willing to bet no to all these. I'm willing to bet, as I did in another video, man, that, that one also got people mad. There's a couple... There's a couple topics that just you can't have them without people losing their minds. And America Chavez is one of them, pro and con, by the way. If you make a video on it, if you comment on it, uh, this series at all, then you're one of the baddies because the baddies are the ones that talk about America Chavez. It's the, it's the evil comics people are talking about America Chavez. Um, and if you are not super hard on it, then you're somehow soft. It's just, it's just a no-win situation in general. But, you know, Disney, for example, cast this, uh, I think she's 15, I don't know, very young, young girl, young actress as America Chavez. It's really clear they're not going to faithfully uh, recap the Gabby Rivera run. It's, it's, it, it is not. There's, they're not going to do it. I can say with firm authority, Disney is not going to get a 15, 16-year-old actress and have her recreating the planet, uh, whatever the hell that planet was, the planet fake Mexican, and, and they're not going to do that. Um, it's just, it's just not going to happen. So where does all this leave us? You know, I, I think that it, it's, it's just, it's tough. We're, we want comics 
I, I love comics. I, I really do. And I love all different types of comics. I want all different types of comics. I want comics that I won't enjoy. I want comics that I do enjoy. I just want lots of comics for everyone. I truly am a believer in this idea that when you say we need more diversity in comics, I agree. If, if what we're talking about is we need a diverse amount of comics and characters and lots of different adventures and lots of different styles and we need we need superhero, we need sci-fi, we need horror, we need western, and we need sports, and we need romance, and we need all we we need everything, um, all different, all 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 different things, races, genders, everything, just as much as we can get. I'm all for it. I really am. I think that the more people we can pull into comics, young and old, the better. I do believe, and I think this is kind of the point of that one video uh, about the sales numbers of Moon Knight, is you can do whatever you want. You can try different genres, you can try different characters, you can try uh, different races, different genders, different sexuality, all different things you can do in a comic. But at the end of the day, you do have to have a good story. You have to have a, a quote-unquote good comic. And I think that one of, the, uh, one of the, the great harms, I think, that was done to entertainment and games and comics and all these things is there got to be this narrative of, you know, hey, everything is for someone, and maybe it's just not for you, as a deflection of quality. I am 100% sure that there are people out there who believe that Biodome with Polly Shore is the absolute best movie of all time, and it's, it's artfully done, it makes them laugh, it makes them cry, it's emotionally powerful for them. I'm sure there, there are people out there who think that. But I also think that more people believe The Godfather is a better film. I, I, you know, in terms of percentage, I'm, I'm willing to bet more people on the planet Earth believe The Godfather is a better film than Biodome. And so, while it's true, any film, any comic, any story can appeal to anyone, you know, like, same thing with comics. I, I'm willing to bet there's more people who enjoy Craven's Last Hunt, that, that comic that, that I did, or, you know, that, that I did the uh, retrospective with a bit ago. I'm willing to bet more people like Craven's Last Hunt than like, uh, oh, I don't know, The Unstoppable Wasp. Okay, that doesn't mean The Unstoppable Wasp is bad, doesn't mean it needs to be destroyed, doesn't mean it's terrible, but it does mean in terms of popularity, Craven's Last Hunt is more popular. Now, why do I think that? Well, it's sold a lot more. That's a, a real hard empirical numerical evidence that suggests it does. I also think it's it's better written, better story, more complexity, all the rest. Again, I'm not saying that you should uh, prevent, it was a Jeremy Whitley, I don't, I, you shouldn't prevent him from doing comics in the future. Of course not. doesn't mean the comic needs to be erased. But it does mean that we do have some ways of determining what is popular and what is less popular. And it would be better if we had more popular comics, <laughs> right? I, I mean, I think so. I, I think that there, there's a weird thing in comics right now where I think a number of creators really revel in this idea of uh, they're creating indie stuff and they're creating, you know, true art and whether people realize it or not, it's still great. And I mean, I, whatever, whatever helps you get to sleep at night, that's fine. Uh, do what you got to do. But at the same time, you know, some comics sell better than others consistently. Some stories, some artists, some writers. It just, it is what it is. For whatever reason, people seem to like Jim Lee's art. Who knows? Maybe some, maybe you hate it. Maybe it's garbage to you. I don't know. It's fine. You're willing, you're, you're, you're perfectly, it's perfectly okay for have you to have your own opinion. And it's also perfectly okay to admit that some things do better than other things. And if you want your company to survive, if you want you know it to financially stay alive, then you're going to at least have to do some of the popular things every now and then, or you're going to make less money, and you're going to sell less, and you're going to get less out into the market, and then you're going to be in a niche business. You know, I, I, I'm perfectly, there's plenty of comics out there that I love that the mainstream did not. And even though I would love to see more of those comics, even though I, I think they're great, um, you know, I also want comics to still be made. So I want to make sure that comic companies, publishers, are putting out a good mix between things that, uh, you know, critically acclaimed, something I might like, and something that, you know, will actually sell and keep them afloat. 
I don't think this is a super controversial opinion. I don't think this is uh, that hard for people to understand. I think it's just common sense. But we, we seem to struggle. And it's what, maybe it's one of the biggest reasons I think social media is such a dumpster fire hellscape. Is that it encourages this concept of um, you don't get to make a judgment call on what is good or what is bad, what is popular, what is not possible. You, you don't get to do that. Everything has to be just great, unless weirdly and randomly a group of people say it isn't great, and then it then that stuff sucks and we must hate it. It's very arbitrary, and it's not based on on math or data or sales or future or anything. I I, I think that that's that's terrible to disconnect the world in that way. I think more people, more kids, more everybody need to be given the self confidence to just like what they like or dislike what they dislike and, and stop giving a damn what other people say. Like how many of these fights over the last several years could have been avoided entirely if people would have just not gotten so bent out of shape over what people enjoy or what people don't, you know, how, how many of those could have been avoided? Feels like a lot. I, it also feels like a lot could have been avoided if some very basic truths could have come out. Look, uh, you may you may absolutely love The Unstoppable Lost. It's fine. You may absolutely love that book. Marvel's not making that book right now. That book was canceled. Why was it canceled? Because it wasn't making enough money. Not because of any kind of political reason. Not because Ike Perlmutter you know, donated to Trump. Not because the bad guys won by forcing the comic off the stands. Not because of any of those reasons. It, it It's not being sold anymore because it wasn't selling. It wasn't making any money. It was losing money. And when things lose money, then you've got a choice. You can either continue to support like a charity or you can cancel it. And businesses, even if they're even if they're evil corporations run by Sama Amanat, it, they still need to make cash because if they don't make cash, they 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 end. I I mean I, no. <laughs> it's not that hard. Oh, well. Anyway, um, look, I hope you guys enjoyed the numbers video. More are coming. I do enjoy them. It's fun to kind of pull out the, the, the logic behind them. It is interesting to see clearly that for all the sound and fury, for all the anger, for all the outrage, and for all the support, for all the virtue signaling, for all the stuff on some of these books, you know, at the end of the day, it didn't really matter. Nobody was buying the book. I don't know. I find that comforting. Comforting and man, maybe a little sad. Yeah, maybe some both. Anyway, what do you think of all this? <laughs> Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Follow me on the social medias and the emails and all the funny things that you put they in front of. In the description of the video, you can find links to all that kind of stuff. And thanks for listening.